Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let x be a real number and consider the following sequence. Then the sequence 2 to the n xn converges. Now, to prove that this sequence converges, we are going to break this up into three cases. Either x equals 0, x is greater than 0, or x is less than 0. And in all three cases, we're going to show that this sequence converges. Let's start with the case x is equal to 0. Now in this case, we're first going to show that all of the xn's must then be equal to 0. And we can establish that by induction. Well, the base case is pretty much already done because x0 is equal to x, which is equal to 0. So now, for the induction step, we suppose inductively that xn is equal to 0 for some n. So now we want to show that xn plus 1 is equal to 0. Well, by definition, xn plus 1 is just going to be equal to this expression. And then, since we're assuming xn is 0, we can replace xn with 0. But then clearly this is just equal to 0. So xn plus 1 is equal to 0. So by induction, we have established that xn is equal to 0 for all n. But then from here, it follows that given any n, we have 2 to the n xn is equal to 2 to the n times 0, which is equal to 0. So all of the terms in this sequence are 0. So this is just a constant sequence of zeros, which means the sequence must converge to 0. And therefore, the sequence converges. And so this completes the case x equals 0. Now let's move on to the case x is greater than 0. Now in this case, we're first going to show that all of the xn's are greater than 0. And to prove that, let's establish that by induction. Well, the base case is already done because x0 is equal to x, which is greater than 0. So now, for the induction step, we assume that xn is greater than 0 for some n. So now, we want to show xn plus 1 is greater than 0. Well, by definition, xn plus 1 is this expression. And we know that the numerator is greater than 0 because that's what we are assuming. And the denominator is also greater than 0. Therefore, the entire expression must be greater than 0. And that tells us xn plus 1 is greater than 0. And so, by induction, we have that xn is greater than 0 for all n. So now, if we consider any n, we have that 2 to the n xn is greater than 0. Because 2 to the n is greater than 0, and xn is greater than 0. So this means that every term of the sequence is greater than 0. So the sequence is bounded below by 0. So now, to show that this sequence converges, all we have to show now is that this sequence is a decreasing sequence. Because if we can show that, then since this sequence is a decreasing sequence that is bounded below, we have, by the monotone convergence theorem, that the sequence must converge. And how do we show that this sequence is a decreasing sequence? We want to show for all n, the n plus 1 term of the sequence is less than the nth term. So to show that, let's give ourselves some arbitrary integer greater than or equal to 0, n. And let's write out the n plus 1 term of this sequence. Now, by definition, xn plus 1 is this expression. And we know that 1 plus xn squared is greater than 1. And we know that the square root of any number bigger than 1 is also bigger than 1. And then if we add 1 on both sides of this inequality, we get 1 plus this guy is greater than 2. So now if we take the reciprocal of both sides of the inequality, 
then the sign of the inequality will be flipped. So we get this, but then since xn is greater than zero, we multiply xn on both sides of this inequality, the sign of the inequality will remain the same. So we have this. So this guy is less than xn over two, and therefore this entire thing must be less than two to the n plus one times xn over two. But this is precisely two to the n xn. And so we have shown that the n plus one term of the sequence is less than the nth term of the sequence. So that tells us that this sequence is a decreasing sequence. So since this is a decreasing sequence that is bounded below, we have by the monotone convergence theorem that this sequence converges. And so this covers the case x is greater than zero. So now let's move on to our final case, x is less than zero. In this case, we're going to show that all the xn's must then be less than zero. And we'll establish that by induction. We see that the base case is already done because x0 is equal to x, which is less than zero. So for the induction step, we suppose inductively that xn is less than zero for some n. To see that xn plus one is also less than zero, well, by definition, we know that xn plus one is this expression. And then we know that xn is less than zero, but the denominator is greater than zero. So this entire expression must be less than zero. So xn plus one is less than zero. So by induction, we've established that xn is less than zero for all n. So now, because xn is less than zero for all n, we see given any n, we have that two to the n xn must be less than zero because two to the n is greater than zero, but xn is less than zero. Multiply them together, it's less than zero. And so that means all of the terms in this sequence are less than zero. So this sequence is bounded above by zero. So we know that this sequence is bounded above. So if we can show that this sequence is an increasing sequence, then by the monotone convergence theorem, we have that this sequence converges. So how do we show that this sequence is an increasing sequence? To show that, we want to show for all n, the n plus one term is greater than the nth term of the sequence. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary n. And let's write out the n plus one term of the sequence. So by definition, xn plus one is this expression. And now, just like we did before, we know that one plus xn squared is greater than one. And we know that the square root of any number bigger than one is also bigger than one. So then if we add one on both sides, we get one plus the square root of that guy is greater than two. Then we take the reciprocal of both sides, the sign of the inequality will flip. So you get this, but now in this case, if we multiply xn on both sides, then we know that xn is less than zero. So the sign of the inequality will flip. So we have that this guy is greater than xn over two, and therefore this guy is greater than two to the n plus one times xn over two, which is just equal to two to the n xn. And so we have shown that the n plus one term is bigger than the nth term. And that shows that this sequence is an increasing sequence. So because this is an increasing sequence that is bounded above. We know by the monotone convergence theorem that the sequence must converge. And so at this point, we have shown in all three cases, x equals zero, x greater than zero, and x less than zero, that this sequence converges. And so this 
completes the proof. So now we have the following definition. We define the limit of the sequence to be the arctangent of x. Right? So what's essentially going on here is, given any real number x, we have the following sequence, x0, x1, x2, x3, defined in this way. So you can think of the sequence x0, x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth, as the sequence generated by x. Well, from this sequence, we can consider this sequence. And it turns out, this sequence will converge. And so, we define the value that the sequence converges to as the arctangent of x. So that is how x gets mapped to this new real number we're calling arctangent of x. And actually, this arctangent is the same arctangent we're all familiar with. But at this point, we are going to pretend that all we know about the arctangent function so far is that it's this limit, because that's our definition. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.